well in the early 80s. We were doing programs with vets. What we noticed, that there seemed to be an inordinate amount of guys that were coming in that telling us they were homeless. It didn't make any sense, but it seemed like every third guy almost was saying, you know, I don't have a place. They fill out a form and they had no residence. And so we started to look at that and we said, well, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. There are a lot more veterans that are on the street than people know about. I don't know anybody that in the third grade when you went to school and they said, tell me what you want to be when you grow up. I don't think anyone ever said, I want to be a homeless street person. People don't understand the homeless on the street. They think they are all uh, have mental problems. A lot of them are families out there that have lost their jobs because of the economy here, can't afford a home. They're living in their car and they're going to work and they're barely able to feed their children. I think people have to be more aware of the fact that these veterans out there aren't getting what they need from the government. And if they are, then they are not giving them the psychiatric help that they need because it's just getting worse all the time. People don't want to look at the homeless, but they will look or think about or maybe support dealing with homeless veterans. They somehow make a distinction there. Close to 40% of the, of the homeless uh, out there are veterans. With the influx of veterans coming back from the current conflicts, we expect those numbers to rise. It's a desperate situation because you don't know where to go. You don't want to beg from friends. You don't want to panhandle. It's a sense of failure. You know, it's, what have I done to get here? You know, I was a senior database analyst. I was a senior systems developer. Now I'm homeless sleeping on milk crates without a clue as to what tomorrow's gonna bring. It's a pretty bad feeling. It's a really bad feeling. And if you're prone to depression, it could probably kill you. I wouldn't want anybody else to go through it. It's no fun. And there's a lot of women and kids on the street like that. And it's, uh, it's sad. These men and women cannot be forgotten. We cannot do enough for them. And as far as I'm concerned, they gave their all for us. We ought to be able to do something in return that is equivalent to giving them the assurance that the remainder of their life, whatever it is, is not going to be in poverty, not going to be homeless. That's a travesty. We can't allow that to happen. Until we solve the problem and bring these people back into society on a basis that is with respect and with integrity and the ability to have a family and not be pandering and, and panhandling, until that's done, we, we shouldn't rest. I have seen good people, even when I was on the street downtown, come and give out sandwiches at 11 o'clock at night. These people are sitting in their homes making up sandwiches, carrying out bottled water and coming to the worst part of town in the middle of the night and giving out food and conversation and just the kids sent what they call peaceable packages here to the vets. Things that meant a lot to us and these are given from people, you know, from their hearts. That means more than I'm sorry. It means more than anything the government could ever do for us. It's it's that that the appreciation that I have, and I know it's shared by a lot of the guys in here for that, is, is, is something that just keeps us uplifted. It keeps us going day to day, you know? Otherwise, a lot of people would give up. I'd give up, uh, you know? You can't get a job, you can't get home. What do you do? The city does that stars, man.